Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage 13 of the Vuelta a España, 204 kilometers, about 125 miles in length, and it's pancake flat. It's not a whole lot of exciting stuff out there to watch on today's stage at the beginning. Now at the end, it's going to get exciting, and there's some excite excitement in the middle. Right away when the race begins, there's three riders up the road. It's Dago Rubio, Alvaro Cuadros from Caja Royal, and Angel Mate from Escatel Escadi. Now, this group's not given much time because back there, all the sprinter teams, FDJ, the Kunit Quick Step, they all want a field sprint on today's stage because there's not very many in the Vuelta España and there's not very many left. Tomorrow's gonna be a big mountain stage, so if sprinters wanna win, their team's gotta be sharp on today's stage. Those three riders are not given much time and with 60 kilometers to, to go though, there'll be some excitement as six or seven riders up front there start drilling it, trying to split things in the crosswind. This is not gonna go over good with the group of Peloton. Let me tell you, on a stage like today, stage 13, this far into the Vuelta after yesterday's exciting all day racing from kilometer zero all the way to the finish, Today, there is no way the professional peloton at the Vuelta at this moment want to be racing their bike full, full on 100%. But the riders up front, they're trying to split it and what little bit of crosswind there is. We'll see Aegon Bernal, he'll miss the split. He's back there in the second, third group back there trying to get himself up to the front. At one moment, we'll see him jumping across going solo while his teammate, Adam Yates' mug, is right there at the front of the picture, right in the back. Aegon Bernal is trying to bridge the gap solo to get to the front group. Now, like I said, there wasn't much wind, so what happens? Finally, everything shuts down about five, seven kilometers later, and there's a little neutralizing with the field. The group of three that were up front, their two-minute lead went down to about 30 seconds during that little fiasco back there trying to break it in the crosswind. Aegon Bernal will get back up front when they all shut it down, but now all the riders are going to be nervous throughout the rest of the stage. Let me tell you, I'm sure somebody in the professional peloton here at the Bolta had talks with those six riders up front trying to blow the race apart. Now, they... they from then on, it's going to stay nervous. When you start a stage like today, though, after yesterday's racing, everybody just wanted an easy, relaxed, mellow stage. It's 204 kilometers long. My God, do you know they want to relax and just get some kind of fitness back in the legs and recover and get that soreness flushed out. Instead, now from 60 kilometers all the way to the finish with the last 50K, everybody's nervous. They're not going full gas up there, but they're definitely nervous. That group of threes time stretches back out to about a minute and 50, but because of the peloton back there being nervous, they'll get caught with 30 kilometers to go. Now with five kilometers to go when the racing's full gas again and everybody's fighting for position, it's Team Enios up there that are drilling it and keeping Aegon Bernal and Adam Yates, their GC guys, in perfect position, safe and out of trouble on today's stage. 4.5 kilometers to go. The Kuna Quick Step takes over the front. This is a little bit different than their normal MO that we saw at the Tour de France where really they don't like taking the front until 1.5 kilometers to go. But here at the Tour of Spain, there's less sprinter teams, there's less power for the sprint. So the Kuna Quick Step, where at the Tour de France, they can take it at 1.5 kilometers to go with four riders. Now they can take it with six or seven riders all the way from just under five kilometers to go. Now things get really exciting at 3.5 kilometers to go because there's a right turn there. And when they come out of the right turn, there's a split. It's the Kuna Quick Step with four riders up front. Mateo Trentin, UAE Team Emirates, jumping across. Tom Pedcock from Enios, along with Egon Bernal, attached on his wheels, trying to close the gap. And Fabio Jakobsen, the De Kuna Quick Step sprinter on today's stage, is behind Egon Bernal, the duel of Enios. Now, we're coming up to a roundabout with about 2.9 kilometers to go. Fabio Jakobsen moves back around Egon Bernal, flies through the corner. We got another left turn coming up, and then Fabio Jakobsen, with about 2.5 kilometers to go or so, closes back up onto the Dakuna Quick Step and UAE Team Emirates, Matteo Trentin's wheel back there. 
Albacene Phoenix flew around the Enos deal duel about the same time and now there's still some more chaos because in the last 3.5 kilometers there's like five turns six turns maybe lefts rights and roundabouts all the way till 500 meters to go so there's a lot of chaos and the Kuna quick step are flying at the front now you got the Kuna quick step coming out of the turn it's four of them it's UAE Team Emirates, followed by Fabio Jakobsen with 1.7 kilometers to go. We'll see Tom Pedcock back there, and he's starting to blow for Aegon Bernal. He'll pull off, and Aegon Bernal's going to have to close the gap up to the, the Kuna Quick Step train now on his own. Tom Pedcock, he did a fabulous job. Remember, he's been chasing the train of the Kuna Quick Step for over two kilometers when he finally pulls off. Aegon Bernal does everything he can to try to close it. But he's not going to be able to get up there as the sprinter teams are just pulling full TGV style up there. We're talking about the European train. The TGV goes 80 miles an hour and the Kuna Quick Step's going just about as fast. We'll see speeds at 66 kilometers an hour up there for the, for the Kuna Quick Step. Behind at 1.5 kilometers to go, we start to see the next problem for Fabio Jakobsen. He falls off the wheel of Matteo Trentin, the UAE Team Emirates. As he does, he's opening up a gap on the Albacene Phoenix train right there. And remember, Albacene Phoenix had just closed that gap a few hundred meters before that. Now Fabio Jakobsen's open up the gap. We'll see him get on the radio. When he does, you know he's telling his last lead out man, Florian Seneschel up there for Dakuna Quick Step. Yo, Florian, this is your job from here on. I'm checking out right here. I got a bike problem or my legs are no good for sure. Dakuna Quick Step continue with the train. But remember, they only have three guys left. This is a big, big problem at 1.5 kilometers, only having three. That means two guys have to pull hard all the way to the finish and get Florian Seneschel all the way to the finish. That's leaving a 500 meter gap that normal, normally Florian Seneschel would do at least 300, if not 500 meters on his own for Fabio Jakobsen. Under one kilometer to go, the Kuna Quick Step got it still on the front. Three guys, followed by UAE Team Emirates, Matteo Trentin, and then the Dakuna Quick Step train that's latched on now. Now, with 850 meters to go, the Kuna Quick Step rider pulls off. There's a slight right bend there. Now, Florian Seneschel only has one teammate left with 850 meters to go. At this point in time, Florian Seneschel's got to be thinking about okay, we went from plan one with Fabio Jakobsen. He got on the radio, he erased plan A. Now we're going plan B. Now, all of a sudden, he's got to start thinking about plan C because there's no way Florian Seneschel's last lead out man can go from 850 meters all the way to 200 where Florian Seneschel really needs to get dropped off in order to win today's stage. So we got a battle and we got the UAE team Emirates, Matteo Trenton sitting on and Albacene Phoenix there. Behind that, Egon Bernal, Enios is just struggling to try to close the gap still. He's been back there since three and a half kilometers all the way till under 850 meters to go, still trying to close the gap. At 600 meters to go, there's a little bit of a chicane. It's a roundabout, but it's going to be a right exit by right, and that's going to drop the riders off at about 500 meters to go. Now, you're looking, entering with that 600 meters. You have the Takuna Quick Step with two riders, Matteo Trentin sitting third, and Albacene Phoenix fourth and fifth. It's Alexander Kruger who's trying to lead out Sasha Madolo. Now, with 500 meters as they're exiting the turn, Alexander Kruger punches it. Now, to my belief, Sasha Madolo can't hold the wheel, and Alexander Kruger opens up the gap on his, on his main sprinter, Sasha Madolo. Up front, he's starting to pass around the two Dakuna Quick Step riders at about 400 meters to go. We'll see Florian Seneschel leave his last team's lead out train and hop on Albacene Phoenix rider's wheel with 400 meters left. 200 meters to go. It's Florian Seneschel that starts his sprint. 175. He's head and shoulders leading today's race as Alexander Kroger blows and sits up. Now with 175 meters to go, it's Florian Seneschel, and he's got a shot at winning stage 13 in the Vuelta a España. But remember, Matteo Trentin, the UAE Team Emirates rider, has had a fantastic draft 
all the way from three kilometers to go after he closed the gap himself, now till 175 meters to go. Matteo Trentin starts his sprint at 125 meters to go. It's a drag race all the way to the line between Dakuna Quickstep and UAE Team Emirates. Finally, Seneschal throws the bike and wins today stage 13 on plan B, possibly plan C, but gets the win for Dakuna Quickstep. Congratulations, Florian Seneschal. That was a great finish to watch live from my couch here in Bend, Oregon. Now, third place on the stage. Alberto Denezi, the DSM rider. I don't know how he got third. DSM had been chasing for three and a half kilometers, and I never saw him in the picture. He did a fantastic job of somehow latching on with the last 500 meters to go, and then just finding a way to get that third spot on the podium. Behind the sprinters, Egon Bernal, who'd been chasing for 3.5 kilometers, did a great job of gaining time on all the other general classification riders in today's stage 13. Now this is what I'm talking about on the butterfly effect when I say the beginning you can make mistakes, the middle less mistakes, and the end you have to be perfect. At 60 kilometers to go, Egon Bernal missed the split in the crosswinds and was chasing solo to try to get across. Now at the very end, after he fixed that mistake, now at the very end, he's up there at the front and out of all the GC contenders, he's the only one who was up there near the sprinters. He lost a few seconds there to Florian Seneschel's win on today's stage, but gained five seconds on all the other GC competitors in today's stage 13. Great heads up from Aon Bernal and Inos. And another example of why all the general classification GC teams race so hard all the way to the finish. A split in the peloton can always happen on any stage. Even today, stage 13, where not much was happening, was a fantastic, fantastic example of why you always got to keep your head in the game, especially at the end of the stages. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon on the next edition of The Butterfly Effect.